Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Hello! Um, I'm here to do another page in my ring-bound journal and I think this might actually be the last full page that we're going to do. Um, the rest is, you know, ephemera and embellishments, the cover, tags, that kind of thing. Um, so I think this is going to be the last page. Um, obviously I haven't put the journal together yet so I don't know how bulky it's going to be but I'm thinking this is the last page. So, here's what I've got. I have a bunch of these really, really long envelopes. Um, I will tell you how long they are because they're longer than my ruler. So that's 12 inches, about 14 inches long. And they're old envelopes from, I think the 60s or 70s, something like that. I mean, here, for example, there's no postcode. So it was, you know, before the postcode days um, or zip code if you're in the US. So yeah old um, but they're just too long for any kind of journal um, and they were folded funny um, this one for example was folded up like this into three and I could make all kinds of different things with these um, but um, I'm gonna make a page so uh, I think these envelopes would have been used for like long photographs um, because one of them said something about photos like do not bend photos or something um, Anywho, so what I was doing was I was looking at the fold lines and this part was folded up naturally like this and I turned it this way um, and it was the exact right height for my journal. That is nine inches tall by about five and a quarter, which is, which is perfect, um, you know, because I'm going with nine by six being my biggest page. So yeah, that fits in right well within that. Might trim some of the top off. But I was looking at that thinking, well, what could I do with it? Um, and straight away, as you might have guessed, we've got a pocket here. And then I was thinking, well, this is nice and sturdy and strong because it's quite a thick envelope. So then I was thinking we could open up the side and have a little secret pocket. And then you turn it over and have this be something as well. So that's what I'm running with. And um, now I'm not worried about losing this, although I am going to take the stamp off if I can. Um, I don't know, it's a, it's a World Cup stamp and I think it's on there nicely but um, it says 1966 I don't know I know you're supposed to like steam it but I'm not worried about it, I'm not going to use a football stamp sorry <laughs> so I'm just going to cover it over um, so yeah, we're going we're gonna to make an envelope page today uh, another one and I'm not going to do a collaged one I'm going to keep it simple um, ish <laughs> simple for me anyway. So let's get to it. So I want to do the pocket side first probably, I think that will be the quickest thing. And for that I want to use some of this blue paper from my porch prints. Um, so I've got this collage type one which has some really interesting typography on it and I've got this floral one and I'm leaning more towards using this, this one. But I think I want it that way because I'm thinking this will be nice on the pocket and so I'm going to want to cut some down from the envelope so I think I'm going to do that first because oops, the um, the envelope is a little bit tatty at the top anyway because I was thinking this can also be a pocket but I'm just going to chop the top off a little bit just so that we've then got a nice strong top or turning into a pocket so that's all fine I think that's straight ish you can always tidy it up after so yeah so that's nicely open now and should feel strong once we've um, decorated it up so let's uh, let's get to it so I have to apologize apologize I've got my window open at the moment because it's another unseasonably hot day um, so if you can hear any, well, birds, <laughs> that's a nice, nice noise, but if you hear any like cars and what have you, then sorry about that. I live in a, a cul-de-sac, but, um, we do have cars. It's quite a busy cul-de-sac really, so. Okay, so let's have a look at this then. I think I want this vinaigre French text. <laughs> for the pocket. 
So I'm going to centre that like so. All right, and where is my pencil? Okay. Yeah, that's exactly the right height for cutting that envelope, wasn't it? Look at that. Um, and I'm going to come in just on the inside of those two points because I think I would quite like a teeniest, teeniest little bit of a mat. Not too much, but just a hint for it to be... Um, yeah, for it to be, um, to see the brown of the, the vintage envelope. Just a hint of it. But I just want to take off a little bit more. From the side. So we took our dog out early, early this morning. Um, it was about half seven that we were actually walking. And it, it was lovely. It was, uh, the sun was out, but it was nice and cool. And we took him down by the woods. He had a little bit of a paddle in the stream. All of that, much better for him than, than going out later. All right, perfect. Let's move that out of the way. Don't need that just yet. Okay, so the next thing is I want to tear this down to my pocket. Um, so, come up a little bit. So we have that, and then I'm hoping I can just sort of tuck this in behind so that it sort of is continued like that, look. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. Right, so I do have to ink these, uh, but I just wanted to tell you about something quickly. Um, just before I started filming, I opened up my blind. I keep it closed uh, when I'm not in here just to keep the, uh, you know, keep the hot air out the sunlight out. Anyway, I opened up the window and there was a jay sitting on the fence outside. Just sitting there. Big jay. Um, and I, I, I recognised it from all the work that I've been doing with birds and botanicals and stuff. Yeah, it was a, it was a jay. I have seen one in, in the wild, but I've not seen one outside the house. <laughs> that was a new one. I've seen one um, down by the river and out in the country and all that, but um, yeah, by our in our garden is <laughs> that was a new one. I think it's because next door have um, they've put out like bird feeders and and everything. And normally it's the pigeons that have been enjoying those, but I think the jay was coming for some water and food. Okay, so I'm just going to simply mat that on there. Now, don't let me forget, I went straight into decorating this, but I do need to open up the side and everything, don't I? I also need to remember that I'm going to have a, um, what's it called? A, the page edge thing that I keep talking about, the one I keep forgetting about. I'm going to have that down the side as well. So we also need to figure that one out. But all in good time. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm still filming these ahead. I'm actually filming these whilst the UK is going through a heat wave where we're expecting like 35 degree heat next week, which uh, for those of you who don't work in Celsius, <laughs> that's hot. That is very, very hot. Um, you know, like going on a summer holiday to seek sunshine kind of hot, not what we're used to here at all. That's probably something like 10 degrees hotter than some of our warmest summers. So yeah, uh, quite, 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 quite hot. And we're just not built for it out here. You know, our ho houses are built to keep the heat in. Um, we certainly don't have, you know, air conditioning or anything like that. Um, most of us do have electric fans. Um, but they're so noisy that I'm learning, you know, when you're, when it comes to filming, it's just not possible to have it have it on. You wouldn't be able to hear me. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be able to hear myself. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one, but um, but we're managing. I think what I've been doing is 
getting videos done in the morning, getting a couple done, and then by the time the afternoon comes, I'm vacating this room as quickly as I can. Not coming back in until the next day. Um, but, uh, it's all good. We enjoy these things, so we make it work, don't we? Right, so... Yeah, so this is a My Porch Prints printable, left over from my Chevy Blue project. But it seemed to go quite nicely with uh, the Tim Holtz, the blue, the blue and the Tim Holtz. Right, so I think we should probably cut into the pocket before I forget again about that. Ooh, excuse me. So, the first thing is, so we've got this top bit open already, so that's going to be a nice big tag or journal card. So I want to run this side open. Just a tiny, tiny little, little piece. Think I got it? Think I got it? Yeah. That's fine. And then, so that, so this side is open here. I didn't want to do that, did I? <laughs> It's going to open. No, that's going to be the pocket, and I want this side open. Oh, what an empty. That's okay, we can use glue. These things happen. You can tell I've not long been up. So I want to just open the one side. So do you think the envelope is too big for my trimmer? It's the first problem. Hmm. Do you think I could just nip in here with my scissors? Should we try? Let's just go for it. We won't know if we don't try. I just need to take off a teeny, teeny, teeny bit. So I'm taking it up to there, and it might be that I need to cut straighter than that. <laughs> Let me just have a little look, see what's going on here. I said it would be a simple pocket, but um, a simple page, but I don't like to make things simple. So it is open, and it's not too bad. I thought it would look funny with it being, you know, technically out of line with the back piece, but actually, because we've got the brown matting, it looks fine. Right, let's put that down before I do that. Okay, so, <laughs> what an empty. Let me just close up the, the top. See these things, they happen, and nothing, a bit of glue cannot resolve. It's because I'm too busy talking and thinking about J's and the heat and such like. <laughs> Not concentrate on what I'm doing. Okay, I think we're good. So, let's review, because I totally confused myself and you in the process probably. So we've got a pocket in the back here. This is going to be a pocket once we glue these two sides up. And we've got a secret pocket once I let it dry. <laughs> uh, we've got a secret pocket in the side which will hold quite a big journal card uh, with a tab, probably. Although the tab will give it away, but you know, whatever. So, shall we close up? I think the other thing I need to think about is how this page edge is going to work on this particular page. So we could just go over like that. That's where the eyelets will be. So then you've still got quite a big pocket otherwise I think it's going to look a bit strange if I were to put the page edge there. I mean it doesn't look terribly strange but it does look a little bit strange doesn't it? And then yeah because you've still got the eyelets that you want to put in. So yeah let's um, glue up our pocket then. So I'm just going to glue up the, the two sides. 
yeah sorry if that confused you <laughs> as I say confusing myself but uh, that's what I get for trying to craft the first thing in the morning <laughs> Well, it's not a first thing. I took my dog out this morning. You know, we went out dog walking early in the morning, but <laughs> maybe I'm not recovered from that yet. Like so, that's fine. Be a nice big pocket. Beautiful page, this paper. It is linked below in case you want to look. I can't remember exactly. I bought two kits, blue kits from my watch prints. One was called French French blue papers and one was called shabby blue. This is probably the French one, I imagine. All right, so that's one side. I might add further decoration to it, but to be fair, this page is very, lots going on. I might add like a cluster detail there, that might be nice, but I won't want to cover up much of the writing or anything. Oh, sorry. Okay, so turning over then, I've got this printable for the back. Um, because I don't, I, I want to bring in some of the vintage sort of colours as well. So, I want these flowers. This is from oops, Weathered Texture, uh, or Weathered Textures. It's, um, it was left over from the collaging. So again, the easiest thing would be to... Mark there, and as I say, I want to get the daisies in. Okay, and then I'm just going to tear that one. Again, I want to come just in between these lines. And we're going to turn this page into... Well, a pretty page. Um, first off, but we're also going to add in a secret journal space. Is what I'm thinking for this side. So I just want to take off a bit more. Very pretty paper. Lots going on with those flowers and whatnot. Oh, I think I took a bit too much off. Never mind. And just take this part off at the top. <laughs> That's tricky, I might have to just get that one with scissors. Let's see. Okay, so I think if we bring it over there, um, because we're going to have this edge covered up with the page edge thingy anyway. So let's get that one inked. Oops, just put a bit of extra ink there. So yeah, sorry if I seem quiet, <laughs> I'm just uh, very aware of the fact that the window is open and I suspect our neighbours' windows are open, everyone's windows are open and uh, yeah, I'm just very aware of the fact that it's very strange that I'm talking away, seemingly to myself, but as we all know, I'm talking to you, so that's that. So yeah, we can have that on there, so let's get that glued down. It's a shame to cover up that, that writing and everything, but I've got so many of these envelopes. Um, and um, the other ones that I want to do, um, like they had really nice stamps on them and nice writing and stuff, so those ones I wouldn't cover completely. Um, I would want to collage around them and stuff, but this one I was less fussed about with the, the football stamp and stuff like that. But sorry it offends anybody, because playing with the vintage but um but yeah I have a whole bunch of these and they just they just need using <laughs> to be quite fair they just need using 
as I say, 14 inches long envelope. Um, if I was to use that in a normal journal, it would have had to get cut down in left, right and centre places. You know, turning it on its side, it still would have been 7 inches by, you know, on each side sort of thing. So this was my best, best bet, I think, in uh, using them. Alrighty, so those are beautiful daisies in the bottom there. As I say, the, uh, the tones of the journal are blues and vintage sort of colours, so I'm trying my best to bring in the sort of the two tones to each page that I do, or at least have one page that's focused on blue, another one that's focused on vintage, and it seems to be working quite nicely, I think, even though I'm using a mix of all different types of papers. Okay, right. So here's what I was thinking. So I don't want to cover up these flowers down here. But this space up the top here is um, not plain. There is stuff going on in the background, but it is you could write on there. What I was thinking was having this is some Tim Holtz ephemera. I thought about having that in some. Um, photo corners so you could pull this out and use it right on it and then write behind as well um, I think Tanya from Teddy Treasure does this a fair amount um, so that's probably where I where I saw it I imagine right so let's get this inked um, and then we will decorate up the page see what we can do this side. Um, so I just want to get a couple of these on so I know where they need to go. Like that. Um, I don't know whether to put, I should put four on shouldn't I really. I think it would be easier to get out with two but I think that would just annoy me, <laughs> uh, not have it, you know, all the way around. Um, did I have four for one? Yeah. So yeah, these are just uh, scrapbooking photo corners, you know. I've got lots of them from years, years gone by when I was into scrapbooking. Oops. I think I was 16 when I did scrapbooking, like, you know, proper, proper scrapbooking. And... They are so sticky, they are officially sticking to me rather than anything else, which is very annoying. <laughs> but I was going to add some glue to them just in case, but yeah. Okay, where's the glue? I don't think it needs the glue, but you never know, do you? Things do lose stick over time, but... So I'm using that page edge just to, so I know where I want this to be. So obviously I need it to be that you can move it out, take the card out. Um, and whatnot. Okay, let me just pop that out. So I'm not, uh, I'm not gluing it in. Okay, like so. I suppose it's a bit strange, isn't it? Maybe I want to put in a second piece of paper behind it. Um, no, um, but I think I would want something more of a vintage sort of colour. So I'll have a look what I've got in these sorts of tones. I think. Otherwise, yeah, that will look a bit strange, I think. But we can get the card in and out. Easy peasy. Fab. Okay, so again, I'm going to keep that on there. Um, just so that I don't start trying to decorate that side. <laughs> um, so I'm going to bring in some of my butterflies. These were a freebie from Teal and Tattered. Um, and again, we're bringing in some of the beautiful blues 
because what I was thinking was, um, although that looks really cool, um, I kind of want it to look like it was meant to be uh, with this on the page. So I thought the easiest way would be to perhaps add some butterflies to the card, something like that maybe. And then also have the same butterflies, or some butterflies maybe, I'm not sure, some of these, um, as part of the picture behind, if that makes sense. That's probably too many, I think a smaller one than that. So it, yeah, it just kind of all belongs together then, doesn't it? Um, yeah, and then we've got this one. Which feels like it's too many butterflies. Kind of want that one on the daisy. It kind of feels like that's one too many butterflies. But then it looks like it's missing without it, so. I'm definitely happy with these two, I think. Um, the only thing is whether, no, I think we're happy with that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Justine, the placement of butterflies. Why do you find things so? Yeah, I think I prefer that one. Okay, I'm definitely happy with those two, so let's just get them on. I just thought it was the easiest thing I could think of to, um, yeah, have the card look like it was all part of the picture. And then you pull it out and have that writing spot. But yes, I definitely want to cover up the, um, uh, the photo corners behind it. So... Which is a shame because I really didn't want to cover up the paper behind. Oops. Things are attacking me. Um, so I have to think about that one, what to put down. So I will glue butterflies whilst I ponder the situation. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think so. I don't think. Definitely. Hmm. I mean, I could have another butterfly, but equally, I won't. <laughs> I could have them flying off the page, but no. It just feels like there's something missing here, but I don't want to overdo it. And I'm thinking I can always add more later. Because I don't want the butterflies to get in the way of um, taking the card out either. I do have to think about that one. Gosh, I hope this video isn't too long. It's only an envelope. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It always surprises me how long things actually take me. I think it's just because I dilly dally over decisions sometimes. No. But, no matter. It's all in fun, isn't it? All good fun. So, yeah, I'm just, um, Trying not to push down their leaves too much with the glue, you know, just to give them dimension and movement and all that. Yeah, I like it. So let's think about this again then. It's just one of those things, I just do not want to cover up the paper. Like, if I were to put some paper down behind it, um, I know this is the wrong colour, but it just looks a bit like, you know, shoehorned in. The only thing I could think of is whether I've got any paper that sort of matches. Um, let me just have a little route around if I've got something that would go. Um, Sorry, I forgot to turn the camera back on. C, 
do, I have found this piece. Um, this is from a different designer. I think this is Liana Scraps. But the colours go quite nicely and it's got some nice lines to follow. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the note paper into the corners like that. And I'm just coming up to the, the top. And just tearing that in line with the corners, as you can see there. So when we glue this in, hopefully it fits. It might want to come down just a tad, let's see. It's going to be a snug fit, but I want it to be, so it hides the black. Let's see. Okay, I want to take some off the top side, just a slither. Try that. So yeah, it would have been easier to have done this a different type of way, but that's okay. We live and we learn. And hopefully you learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I can't get that in for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I haven't got anything small just to poke in there. Feels incredibly tight on that top, this this one, which means possibly we need to take some off the side. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think that blends in enough with the background that it kind of looks like it belongs there. Do you think? I didn't want to cover up the back paper, but I think that works. Oops. So I am going to ink it, only lightly, um, because at the end of the day it is an additional piece of paper on top of another design. But I wanted it to be that it does sort of blend in. But how cool that you've got these lines to follow now. Alright, so I'm going to use the Kalau and just glue this whole piece down. Um, and I'm using the cloud because it will give me some wiggle room. But I'm just putting it on lightly so that it doesn't spew out everywhere. Okay. Okay. That was easy peasy, that's fine. not have a glue glue avalanche as I call it blue avalanche glue avalanche <laughs> not sure uh, I might need to put some glue on these these edges of these corners and um, I'll probably do that after just just here look it's just um poking out a bit but equally they're really cheap cheap ones but equally I don't want to make it so you can't put the card in now it's going to happen, isn't it? Mm -mm. Yeah. I guess they, they were only cheap corners, but I think they work just fine. Like so. There we are, so when you pull your card out, you get that writing space, which looks like it's part of the design-ish. So, yeah, that, that's the page. Um, so as I say, I might add a cluster to the pocket on the other side, but I really don't want to cover up the paper because it's so beautiful. So, let's see. think so. Once we add this on it will have a whole whole other look to it really, won't it? I think so. As I say, once I get it into the journal I'll be able to assess whether it needs more. And so then we've got this on the other side. Um, I might cut down some of the brown at the top but um, that's now glued, yeah. So we've got a great big pocket there and we've got our secret secret pocket in here a nice big journal card yeah I'm happy with that so yeah as I say I might put something here 
but equally doesn't really need it um does it might move the the thing over a little bit i don't know anyway <laughs> i'll leave it there that page is done um so that wasn't too bad about half an hour give me dithering away with what i wanted to do with it but um i hope that's given you some ideas of another page you can have in your ring bound journals um or really any kind of journal, I'm sure this would fit as an ephemera piece, you just might need to change the sizing. Because um, this is quite a <laughs> quite a large journal that I am filling, but it's giving me the chance to use these great big pieces that I just wouldn't have been able to use otherwise. So I'm now going to sit here and have fun inking my envelope, and I will hopefully catch you on the next video. Um, which, yeah, um, as far as I'm aware, won't be a page. It will be, um, I might try and do some tags next time or something, um, or some embellishments. But um, either way, I hope you've been enjoying the series, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>